Welcome to today's episode of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am Janice Davis, your guest host, filling in for Rick Franzi. I'm thrilled to be here today and excited to speak with our guests. We have two directors from Teaching Kids Programming, plus a senior leader from TEDx. This business talk show airs live on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 4 p.m. and Thursdays at 3. Heard live exclusively on Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. If you're listening to this show as a podcast, we encourage you to listen live during our broadcast time. This show is brought to you by Decision Toolbox, Smart Business Magazine, Succession Strategies, Center Club, MBN Design, Tone Software, SNH Rubber, and UPS Protection. The goal for this show is, of course, to help you, our listening audience of CEOs running middle market firms, to improve your decision making skills. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome Jessica Ellis and Justin Valley of Teaching Kids Programming. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Justin. Hello. Hey. How are you guys? Great. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're so excited to have you. Just just to jump right into it, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Tell us about Teaching Kids Programming. Um, sure. Teaching Kids Programming was uh, the brainchild of Lynn Langett, who is a former Microsoft employee and was instrumental in the DigiGirls um, education program, and Llewellyn Falco, who is a really cutting-edge um, computer developer. And they saw something missing about four years ago in tech education for kids. And it was, there was a lot of one-offs. There was a lot of one-day events to introduce kids to computer programming. But there was still not a ongoing one year of curriculum to teach kids programming. And so they took on that challenge and they have developed an amazing curriculum. Absolutely. It sounds amazing. I was reading about it earlier and it's just fabulous. This is all made up of volunteers. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, it's the all volunteer right now. Wow. Justin, how did you get into this? Um, I actually came to Teaching Kids Programming. Um, my background is as a software trainer um, and I was friends with Jessica and I just, had just gotten back from a trip in, uh, in Africa actually where I was uh, wow. Yeah, I was training kids and then uh, they were orphans and uh, they were learning computer skills over there and I got back and, and I said, hey, you know, I really enjoy teaching kids um, and just serendipitously, uh, Jessica said to me, hey, would you like to come teach a Java class with me? And I said, Jessica, look, I don't know the first thing about Java. <laughs> How can I do that? And I said, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, come over and I'll, I'll, teach, you, I'll teach you the uh, lesson. And we went through it. Um, the first lesson, about three minutes in, the, the kids um, had their first line of code in. They ran the program and they were cheering. And I said, man, this is fantastic. Um, I really, really want to be a part of this. Wow, that is amazing. Is is that really the the mission and and the goal of why it was founded? Yeah, the, I mean, absolutely. The um, the celebratory nature of the curriculum and the kids all in it together. This is not sitting at a computer by yourself. Um, there's plenty of coding opportunities like that, but they're all very solid, solitary, and, and we really wanted something that was a classroom setting and teacher led. Wow, this is fabulous, especially because your motto, it kind of sums up everything. It's fun, it's proven, it's free. Is that is that did I get that right? Yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely right. It it is fun. Um one of the things that Lennon alone did when they created the curriculum was to make it really celebratory. Um so the kids are working in groups. It's social, they're communicating. Um they get the 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 tortoise, which is which is our object that we're using um, in the Java Java programming, they get the tortoise to do what they wanted to do, and the kids are cheering, and it's it is fun and it, it is free and it's uh, the the curriculum is open source as well. What is the typical age groups that you guys get? We've taught it as young as eight, and the biggest kind of drawback with that really is keyboarding skills. It really is middle school curriculum. The between eleven and fourteen is our target. Um, it's been taught to high school kids, and, but I will tell you, you know, I was in London in May um, doing a train the trainer and they were all computer science um, students, I mean college students working for UK wow. youth out there and they celebrated just as much as the kids. We, in that training, they were just as excited and enthusiastic. So it's middle school is, is the age group we're going after though. Wow, this is, this is awesome. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the TKP method? Sure, sure. So it's it's intentional meaning uh, it's it's teacher led. Um, Jessica alluded to this earlier, where we uh, there's a lot of programs out there where it's solitary and and a person sitting on a computer by themselves. Um, with the teacher led, uh, you actually have somebody leading the classroom and keeping the kids on track. Um, it's social. What we do is we have a 
pair programming, meaning there are two kids on each laptop. Uh, so there's a driver who's doing the keyboarding, and then there's a navigator who's doing the uh, instructing, um, and they switch every five minutes. Um, so this method we found, it, they, they have to get up from their seats every five minutes and trade. It keeps them really, really engaged. Um, and it, uh, we found that the pairing kids up, they really find their footing together socially and uh, learning. Right, right. You know, we were discussing how so many of the jobs for this upcoming generation revolves around tech. And programming is just on the forefront of this. I mean, I imagine if, if you get a handle on programming, you could be hired anywhere, right? So with programming, how do you see the kids being able to react and master something that a lot of adults find really difficult? Well, kids learn everything faster than adults. <laughs> I mean, that, that's first we of all. We knew that was coming. You know? <laughs> and, and this generation is different than any generation before it in that they are already expert users. They already consume technology on their phones, their iPods, their laptops in a way that no one else ha ever has before. But this generation also is not really learning how to be creators. So they're mm. consumers. There's an app for everything, but they are not learning how to create. And, and you know, even a couple decades ago, if you wanted your computer to do something, you had to know how to code to get it to do that. It wasn't ready for you by a button. Um, so it's kind of it's this gap in education in that we think the kids are so much more tech savvy now than they were. And they are but they're tech savvy at consuming technology. They're not really tech savvy at creating it, and it just doesn't exist. The curriculum is not out there right now. Right, right. And, you know, it reminds me a lot of my background. I'm an author and a host, and I actually speak a lot about video games and how they help kids master leadership skills and camaraderie, and they build this community. And, you know, one grandparent told me, you know, I want my child to go out and play in the cul-de-sac, and his grandson said, Grandpa, this is my cul-de-sac, you know, my computer, uh, my tech, that is how I play. That's how I create my own play dates, you know, so to speak, with my friends. So it really is interesting just the, 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 the difference, like you said, with this generation growing up with such, such technology. One of the things we found, too, is uh, we tell the kids that, um, we, we ask the kids how many kids in the class are playing Minecraft. Minecraft is, is really massive in this generation. Um, and at least half the class raise their hand and say, hey, we play Minecraft. We ask them, does anybody know where Minecraft was coded? And it turns out it was coded with Java in Eclipse, right. which is exactly exactly the curriculum we're using. And, and you see the kids get on board instantaneously. It's, That's it's, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, you know, and also the, oh, the, 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 the thing you're saying about the cul-de-sac is... Um, we implement something called mob programming. We have, when we're teaching the kids the most difficult parts of the curriculum is when we put them in a group with one keyboard and we had a group of these 11 and 12 year old girls this summer. There was eight of them in a circle and they not only, they followed our instruction, but they took over the class. Justin was leading that and he really became irrelevant to the class at that point <laughs> because they really they caught on they took over and then they actually moved past what we were instructing them to do wow. they started doing something they did it in a much more complex and difficult way and this was their second class of the week that's great and they afterwards were talking about it and they talked about how they were willing to go for the hard thing because they were doing it together you know, that on their own, it would have been too scary, but they were willing to really go for how can we make this harder as a group. And it is, it's just like that. This is a group of giggly preteen right. girls. <laughs> right. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, we talk to a lot of uh, leaders running their own businesses. So as leaders running your firm, I mean, what challenges have you guys come up against and how do you face them with, with, with outreach and things like that? Uh, having enough people to do everything that we're asked to do. Resources, really. Re resources, by far, is the hardest. The amount of requests we get um, far outweigh our ability at this point to meet those requests. So for the CEOs and, and you know leaders running their firms, have you discovered any tips or tricks for gathering those resources, for reaching out and saying, hey, we're getting you know these requests? What have you guys found? It's really, it's really been a, a grassroots effort so far, and we're, we're trying to get to a point where we're able to scale it and really reach out to more, more CEOs and, and really tell them what we're, all about, we're about, because we really think they will be on board. We have a partnership right now with um, the Girl Scouts 
of Southern California in which their STEM director actually chose us kind of as their programming curriculum to introduce to 32,000 Girl Scouts. Wow. And we have a partnership with the um, Boys and Girls Club and they actually just built a brand new tech teaching room and that's where we ran summer camps this summer to really introduce them to our program mm -hmm. and um, the CEO there David Crean is extremely supportive of pushing this forward so we have 22,000 members of a boys and girls club and we have 32,000 Girl Scouts that are waiting for you know us waiting on us a little bit we're doing it we're going as fast as we can right now um, our Southern California fundraising effort we do we have a lot of projects going other places but in Southern California we are looking to raise fifty thousand um, dollars by the end of the year to implement an after-school and homeschool program at eight branches of the Boys and Girls wow. Club and to be able to train the staff mostly it's about getting staff trained and up, right. up and be able to implement those programs that support is essential we're speaking with Jessica Ellis and Justin Valley from teaching kids programming I'm your host guest I'm your guest host Janice Davis stay with us because when we return we're going to discuss the upcoming events and future goals of teaching kids programming so we'll be right back after these words from our valued sponsors Can we talk about your family business? You know, that thing you put your whole life's blood, sweat, and tears into? Well, what happens when you retire or try and pass that business on to your children? At Succession Strategies, we can help you find the answers. We'll guide you through the unsettling process of protecting your family legacy and successfully passing your business on to the next generation, safely and securely ensuring that it'll both survive and thrive for generations to come. So ask yourself just one question. Can I really afford to wait? Take the first step. Take our complimentary self-assessment at SuccessionStrategies.com or call us at 714-560-9022 to set up a free consultation at your convenience. That's succession strategies Com. Today's businesses are embracing voice over IP telephones and unified communication desktop technologies to more effectively communicate and collaborate with their customers, suppliers, and colleagues. The Reliatel management software from Tone Software Corporation helps organizations of all sizes manage their communications technologies to ensure great voice quality and better levels of service and reliability throughout their business. Through Reliatel, you'll gain higher return on investments from VoIP and unified communication technologies while lowering the associated operational support and maintenance costs. Learn more. Visit www.tonesoft.com or call 800-833-8663 for information on Reliatel by Tone Software, the solution for quality business communications. Hey, did you know that over 73% of consumer packaged goods and retail products fail miserably within their first year? Why? Because they find themselves in the pit of unawareness. You don't want to go there. Call me, and I'll make sure that your packaging gets noticed. You know how I know? Because I'm the founder and creative director of MBN Design. We're one of Orange County's most established and trusted design firms. With over 20 years of experience, I can ensure that your brand will always stay new. Ask me how our packaging sold millions in months, or see for yourself other success stories on our website at www.mbndesign.com. We're MBN because we're making brands new. Call 714-458-8701 and talk to me, Hector Garcia. That's myself. 714-458-8701. I'll be waiting for your call. Welcome back, everyone, to Critical Mass Radio. I'm Janice Davis, your guest host, and I'm here speaking with Jessica Ellis and Justin Valley from Teaching Kids Programming. I want to thank and acknowledge our listeners who download our show as a podcast. You have downloaded over 13,000 shows during the last 30 days. We here at the program really appreciate your continued and growing support. 
All shows can be heard live on octalkradio.net or rebroadcast anytime from iTunes, Stitcher.com, and other business-oriented podcasting services. Jessica, tell us a little bit about, recap the fundraiser that you mentioned. You're raising $50,000, and then we'll go into Mona Foundation as well. Yeah, so our goal right now is we now have a an actual tech room designated for training um, at the San Diego Boys and Girls Club. And w- our goal is to train um, after school staff in all eight branches of that Boys and Girls Club and to offer um, training to Girl Scout leaders um, or train the girl, you know, train the Girl Scouts ourselves. But we're hoping to raise $50,000 towards that effort. Um, because the boys and girls club, that boys and girls club has access to 22,000 kids wow. and there's 32,000 girl scouts and we definitely have an outreach towards girls uh, i th- i had a really interesting experience we did a pilot program in february in which vi- we we did a couple flyers we just wanted to get through the curriculum with some some kids of different ages and we did a homeschool and an after school series of classes and every single kid that registered was a boy or every single parent registered their son um and that was unacceptable to me it was it was upsetting that there were no girls in the class right as much fun as the boys were and i'm actually a mom of three boys so i like boys (laughs) um but we created we really brainstormed and we created a summer camp and it was uh, a 30 hour a week summer camp that we ran this summer we did um multiple sessions And we were going after girls. And so we combined with the Boys and Girls Club um, Center for a Healthy Lifestyle. And we did a software, um, computer programming, tech fun, Greek barbecue camp. I like it. And it got 62% girls enrolled. Oh, that's great. But but the not great part about it. Oh, well, it's, it's great. It's great. Is the boys were just enrolled. I think I talked to the parents of almost every girl because they wanted to make sure there was another girl enrolled, that their daughter would like it. It's not a go-to. When you see computer programming, people by default don't think girl. Interesting. And the girls were the rock stars of that camp. And I get asked that a lot as well. You know, uh, speaking on several panels all over the country about writing as an author, and I work alongside video game professionals, a lot of women ask me, are there positions open for women you know, yeah. to, to to work in the gaming industry? And, and and they have this this block in their mind, thinking that you know there there isn't. And I that's why this topic is so close to my heart because I I want to encourage women all over the country to find their voice and their passion well, and don't be afraid to go after any of these different genres. And to and to that end, we actually had our two our lead teacher for the programming was actually. Um, Lynn Langwood's 15-year-old daughter, Samantha, and my 15-year-old son, Brick, taught with her, and Justin taught. Um, and the three of them did that, and that was very intentional because we wanted to show these kids that A, girls did this, and B, right. teenagers did this. Right, absolutely. And so we put the two 15-year-olds up there, and th- they're as good a teachers as we got. They're really amazing no well <laughs> that's awesome well and it reminds me too of a, of a ted talk that where you know uh the woman was was explaining that right they did this research study that right out of college right after they graduate men like something crazy you know 90 something percent of men will negotiate their first salary at their first job and only 1.2 percent of women will negotiate they will just accept whatever they're offered and i thought that was fascinating and and how there's we so much want to change and empower women to f- again find their voice find their value and not be afraid to go after what they seek absolutely absolutely justin you wanted to talk a little bit about the the work life effect that this program has on kids well one of the, one of the things that i've noticed with the in my experience with teaching kids programming is that the curriculum is brilliant for a number number of reasons um there is a goal for each lesson and that goal is accomplished but that goal is accomplished usually usually about halfway into the class then we say to the kids we say hey look what if we want to accomplish something else and they're off on their own they're using what they learn and the thing to me being coming from a a corporate background is that's so relatable uh all these corporations they have projects and they're always turning on a dime so with the curriculum being able to implement these skills of being able to to adjust and to to actually take what you learn and and not just 
right to a certain recipe every time. And I, I think that's why it's so brilliant. Right, right, absolutely. Jessica, yeah, how you well, it's, it's just very, <laughs> it's not copy and paste. And I, and uh, we hear that a lot. They learn communication skills. They learn logic skills. They, they have to communicate. We play a really fun game with them in which they have to speak so much to each other. And um, we played this game for four days with them. And I remember after four days, one of them announced, wait a minute, this is math. And it was math. <laughs> But we had kind of tricked them into doing math and logic for um, four days because it was fun. But that is a thing we hear a lot from kind of C-level people is th there's a communication breakdown between their programmers and them because they're not speaking the same language. Right. And so that's one of the reasons is even if you don't want a computer programming career, learning the coding language is so important. It's connecting for for Absolutely. anything in life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. That's amazing. Again, we're speaking with Jessica Ellis and Justin Valley from Teaching Kids Programming. Uh, you guys, as leaders in your in your on your firm, what what steps are you going to take to grow your business? What what's in the what does the future hold? Well, I, I think right now uh, we're working on programs locally, and and those are really building blocks. We're looking to scale. We're only limited by the amount of teachers we have trained at this point. We've got a curriculum that's free and open source, and we're ready to spread that. We just need to get teachers trained up. So by doing what we're doing um, with the Boys and Girls Club, by doing what we're doing with the the Girl Scouts, we're we're getting that scalability, um, and it really allows limitless growth. Wow, that's good. And we are, I want to mention, we're a project of the Mona Foundation. The Mona Foundation is based out of Seattle, and, and they're an amazing foundation. We are actually, Justin and I are heading up next month to their, we're going to get fancy and go to their gala. <laughs> awesome. And, um, and, and to go up there, they invited us up there to come report back of what Teaching Kids Programming is doing. They really are trying to change the world and and introduce kids to skill sets all over the world and we're very honored to be one of their projects from from all of this experience that you guys have gained you know running this this business is there a, a, a tip or a trick or something you would have done differently or a, you know a guiding principle that you live by that you can share with our other leaders listening in today I think uh, I think the biggest thing is just not reinventing the wheel. There's there's so many people, especially if, if you're in Southern California. There's so many knowledgeable p people and people who really really want to help. So asking for help has just been I think a huge huge uh, asset for teaching kids programming. And I think that's cool that you mentioned that because I th I think a lot of us feel sometimes uh, should I ask because you don't want to impose, you don't want to, you know, it, we do want to take on a lot. I think on ourselves as leaders and I think when you define the goal of your organization like you guys have and the message you want to reach with kids just connecting that and sharing that people will, will want to jump on board have you found that absolutely and we have just telling the story I mean just you know what what are you doing and just telling the story we have been introduced to so many people that we would have never met otherwise because everybody sees the value in this and um, and people want to help. They really do. They love the opportunity to be able to help and, and um, just giving them that venue and people really shine. Right, right, absolutely. How would someone get in touch with you if they have questions about uh, your program? Our website is teachingkidsprogramming.org. Um, my Twitter handle is uh, J-E-L-L-I-S underscore T-K-P. And my Twitter is uh, Justin Val, V as in Victor, A-L-L. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much for being a friend of the program. Uh, I can officially welcome you to the Critical Mass <laughs> for you. Business thank community. You, you. Yeah, it's, it's been a blast just hearing about this because like like you guys said, it's all run by volunteers. You know, it, it's a it's like a grassroots is how you described it Absolutely. operation. And that is so important to spread the word and get that support. So thank you again, both of you, for, for being here. Our next guest is from TEDx, and she'll be join, joining us in just a few moments. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. When it comes to pioneers in their respective industries, we all know the Apples, Starbucks, and Trader Joe's of the world. In the realm of recruiting, Decision Toolbox is the industry's best-kept secret. 
with 90% of their business from referrals and repeat customers. For over 20 years, Decision Toolbox's U.S.-based team of recruiters, sourcers, professional writers, quality personnel, and tech support has perfected a Six Sigma approach to talent management. No matter the size of the project, Decision Toolbox delivers incredible results. A cost per hire less than half of what contingency firms charge. With the winning candidate presented in an average of 14 days. All with a 12-month candidate warranty. With results like that, Decision Toolbox won't be a secret for long. Visit us at www.dtoolbox.com for more information. If you are an Orange County CEO or a business owner, this message is for you. Do you ever feel isolated with no place to turn for advice or feedback? Who holds you accountable to your commitments in your company? Where do you find the right resources to help you and your company grow? If you have had these questions, then Critical Mass for Business might be the answer for you. Critical Mass for Business is committed to helping you make better decisions through the power of peer learning. These are groups of peers who are running businesses just like you. CEO Peer Groups provides a great sounding board to test fresh ideas and new concepts, review your strategic plans and tactical goals, and present issues and opportunities for a critical discussion. The result is improved strategy, accountability, and improved business results. If you are interested in learning more, go to www.criticalmassforbusiness.com and learn about our CEO Peer Groups. CEO Peer Groups is a registered trademark of Critical Mass for Business. s and Rubber is a manufacturing company in Fullerton, California. We specialize in custom molded, extruded, and stamped rubber parts. If your next job requires a rubber part, we would appreciate the opportunity to quote on it. We serve aerospace, automotive, and many other industries. We work with many types of rubber, including silicone, EPDM, neoprene, buninitrile, and viton. Our quality system is ISO and AS9100 approved. Over our 47 years in business, the SNH brand has become known for superior quality, quick turnaround, and competitive pricing. Please check out our website at www.shrubber.com or call 714-525-0277. Let SNH be your ceiling solution. back, everyone, to this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am Janice Davis, your guest host, filling in for Rick Franzi. I want to thank, for, thank you all for listening to today's broadcast. Our audience demographic is 98% business owners and executives who listen to learn from our guests. If your firm is interested in reaching these top decision makers, then advertising on our radio show may be the answer. Each month, our sponsors gain valuable exposure through their support of the show. We deliver over 30,000 highly targeted sponsor impressions a month. To learn more, contact Rose Chimura at 951-515-4661. That's 951-515-4661. All shows, of course, can be found on our website, criticalmassforbusiness.com. And it's a pleasure to welcome Moshda Eskandari from TEDx to the program. Hi, Moshda. Hi, Janice. Thank How you. How are you? I'm great. Welcome. I'm so excited you're here. I'm excited to be here. Just to, to jump into it, tell us a little bit about your background and your path to getting to this organization. Um, I was born in Iran, uh, lived there for a couple of years, studied mechanical engineering, moved to France for another couple of years. Um, continued with an MBA, worked for high-tech companies, moved to Bay Area before coming to OC, and I'm happy to call OC home for the past 10 years. Wow, welcome. I, I, I'm still trying to find my home. I, I've lived in Austin, Texas for mm -hmm. quite a while, now I'm in California, but California is starting to feel like home. You know, uh, California is home, France was home, and I guess today, wherever I live with my family becomes quickly home. Wow. Well, tell me a little bit about what you do with TEDx. What I do with TEDx, um, I uh, spent most of my career in uh, private, highly competitive industries. The last one was Oracle. So, um, moving from... Um, 
these kind of industries and companies to philanthropy was a huge, nice step. I had the opportunity to meet with many leaders all around the world, and one thing they had in common, they were looking for new ideas and finding a way to bring change. Right. That was the whole idea of getting involved with TEDx. Um, I have been a big fan of TED for many years. Same when, here. <laughs> same here. Good, because in our community, percentage of people familiar with TED is less than 10. Wow. Which was a big surprise to me when we started. Right. So when they launched the TEDx initiative, independently organized TED event, I thought TED is taking place in Long Beach. Uh, everyone knows about TED. Let's use that amazing platform and create some conversations. Right, right. Especially because, you know, when you, when you know about TED and you know that their, their motto is to inspire and connect and, and innovate and share ideas, uh, that caught my eye right away. Is that how you felt? Uh, inspiring, innovative, made, make me think of ideas that didn't cross my mind. Absolutely. But I don't know the exact reason. I'm not, um, I have only been here for 10 years. All I know that when I first moved here, it felt like a silo community. We have so many cities Many things are happening. We have wealth. We have smart people. We have everything. But where is the cultural center hmm. of uh, Orange County? Where do you go to meet like-minded people? That was missing. Sure. So I thought, let's use TED and create conversations. But TED was perceived here. The first question I was getting from the majority of people, who is TED? So um, we started to say, what is TED, before saying, what is TEDx Orange Coast? You know, we were just talking about uh, TED uh, earlier in the show and how, you know, watching one of those about women and, and, and the statistics between people right out of college, uh, men are more likely to negotiate their first salary, where women are more likely to accept it right out of out of college and mm -hmm. just things like that bringing awareness and have planting those little seeds in our mind where you know I'm about to have a, a, a baby daughter and <laughs> yeah so so things like that just watching a TED talk and having those little seeds planted in my mind going how can I empower and instill uh, confidence in type building in, in this little girl that's gonna come into the world and you know for me personally I, I can relate because I, I used to be so shy and, and, and so worried about voicing my own opinion, and it was through uh, video games and mm -hmm. through TED Talks and through building these communities where I learned valuable leadership skills. Have you found that um, with TED? Where it I have found that with TED, and um, it is TED Talks have been viewed over 2 billion times since Amazing. 2006 in all over the world. They are translated in 104 languages, all by volunteers. And um, every second, s s 17 people are watching a TED Talk. Wow. Now, I guess we need to do a little bit more in our community <laughs> to talk about the power of ideas and what is the benefit at any age. Because Rick Franzi loves to, to, to discuss peer-to-peer -peer learning yep. and how sharing your knowledge can help grow your business, can help uh, face those challenges. The idea behind TED Talks, of course, sharing, spreading ideas worth sharing. Uh, with that being said, uh, when you get involved uh, with the TED or TEDx community, every single person, in addition to the speakers, has a story to tell you. So it's not just about listening to talks. It's about meeting, really meeting like-minded people and having a real conversation with them. What we try to do with TEDx Orange Coast is taking it one little step further Ideas are great, but where they can really be impactful when they are followed by actions. So we have been looking for different ways of making our TEDx a little bit more action oriented. Okay. Um, two things here. One, we created a TEDx teen challenge for teenagers, 13 to 19 years old. And our goal is giving them visibility a little bit of seed money and mentorship. Our focus was on social impact projects. We don't want them to create anything for us. 
we want them to share the idea that they have already been working on right or the idea with an implementation plan so we had the first series of winners last year this is a little bit more on the action side what we are going to do this year which is a uh, new event for us is when you go to a TED conference the main TED conference they their focus is really as much on the speakers and talks than on the attendees and the connections that are made with the attendees right so we are cre going to create through what we call social spaces different theme based spaces with dedicated time with innovations showcased hands-on experiences so in addition to listening to over 25 speakers and talks they can come meet there interact with each other and hopefully some great ideas are going to come out of that right right you know it reminds me of one of my mottos see a need fill a need yeah and, you know it comes from that movie robots and i took that to heart five years ago that's how i became an author i saw a need between two circle of friends that were miscommunicating and didn't understand each other and i thought how can we bridge the gap how can we bring them together and that's the whole whole background between how holders dominion was formed so with with tedx starting at that teen challenge mm -hmm. i feel like you're establishing a way for your business to grow in a new avenue that 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 hasn't been established yet uh you mentioned for your business to grow. TEDx is not a business. It's True. A, it's a business venture, but it's not a business. TED is in, TEDx is a nonprofit, just like TED. True. Uh, basically, all we need is to break even. Uh, and this is happening through sponsorship and ticket sales. If we are lucky enough, which has never happened, to be positive, then we will keep this money for the next year event. So I it's see. really not a money-making machine. Right, right. It, and I have not been, and I keep continuing saying I'm not an event producer, but I guess after four years, I am becoming one, which has not been. <laughs> right. Um, but so many of, of you come together, obviously, as about business. About 100 yes. volunteers. And wow. the entire event is run by volunteers. Wow. So the whole purpose is in the community that, Every single person plays a role. You're sure. a volunteer, you're showcasing an innovation, you're a speaker, uh, you're a partner sponsor. So they are all getting mixed up. And the platform, it, we, we try to create, be a catalyst to, cre to create a platform where sparks happen, uh, innovation is everywhere, and hopefully collaboration is gonna come out of it. Sure, sure. For so many of our listeners who are leaders and CEOs and running their businesses facing different challenges can you discuss some of the challenges you know even though you're a volunteer organization oh. putting together such you know big events and coordinating I'm sure comes with a lot of challenges have you have you deciphered any keys or tricks um, I mean working with a hundred percent volunteer organization was new to me because working in a corporation, when you have paid employees, you just make things happen. Uh, that by itself is a challenge, challenge that I needed to learn. I think our biggest challenge today is really outreach to the right community. Hmm. I said that the percentage of TED fans or TED savvy people in Orange County is less than 10. But we have not even been able to reach out to those 10% yet. We have many community partners that are promoting the idea and the event. We have Pacific Symphony, we have Arts OC, we have Orange Coast Magazine, we have a lot of them. But somehow, lack of resources or full-time employees, all of our volunteers are full-time professionals. Sure. So they are passionate about that. They are giving their time to make it happen. But we have not been lack of resources to do a real outreach yet. Work in progress. I see. I see. Again, everyone, we're speaking with Mojde Eskandari from TEDx. Stay tuned. We have more in store coming up for you about the future and events that she has planned. I'm your host, Janice Davis. We'll be right back after these words from our valued sponsors. There's something positive about the word up. When things are looking good, they're looking up. 
When someone's down, you cheer them up. So how do you move up? Well, when it comes to getting your bachelor's or master's degree, there's one university that stacks up, Brandman University. Brandman is ranked by U.S. News and World Report as one of the nation's top 10 universities for online bachelor's programs. Brandman's online graduate programs in business and education also receive top honors. So look us up at brandman.edu. Brandman University. Move up. And I would certainly also... uh, Smart Business Network is a business-to-business multimedia company providing insight, advice, and strategy for C-level executives of fast growth, middle market, and large companies. As one of the nation's largest publishers of local management journals, under the Smart Business name, Smart Business Network publishes 19 regional print editions, presents dozens of large and small-scale business conferences and award programs, and produces a vibrant interactive digital media presence. For more information, visit us at www.sbnonline.com. UPS Protection has been protecting systems in the U.S. against brownouts, blackouts, and poor quality power for over 25 years. We provide power protection systems, including UPS, lighting inverters, generators, and service for clients from coast to coast. We specialize in solving all your power needs. As a direct reseller of the best brands in the industry, including Liebert, Powerware, and APC, we can solve all your power protection needs. Protecting your power is our main goal. We offer on-site or depot repair of our critical equipment. To better serve your budget constraints, UPS Protection also offers both reconditioned and new products. Welcome back, everyone, to Critical Mass Radio Show. I'm your host, Janice Davis, filling in for Rick Franzi. I want to thank and acknowledge all of you, all of our listeners who download our show as a podcast. You have downloaded over 13,000 shows during the last 30 days. We here at the program appreciate your continued and growing support. Of course, all shows can be heard live on octalkradio.net or rebroadcast anytime from iTunes, Stitcher, and other business podcasting services. I'm speaking with Mojde Eskandari from TEDx. Mojde, we left off talking about how inspiring and connective and innovative the, the, the goals and just the, the future you know, of TEDx, how they want to connect everyone together. But can you tell us a little bit about the difference between TED and TEDx? TED, uh, T-E-D, stands for, stands for Technology Entertainment Design. Started 30 years ago as a conference where technology, entertainment, and design converged. And today really uh, has a much broader scope, and it goes anywhere from science, business, to global issues. TEDx events are independently organized TED events licensed by TED and created in, fr- in uh, the spirit of TED's mission, Ideas Worth I Spreading. Uh, independently organized, but fully following TED guidelines. So that's the main difference. When they started that initiative in 2009-10, um, I guess they were not thinking that in only five years or a few years, there will be about 10,000 TEDx events globally. Wow. And um, we are one of the largest one with a license for a two-day event, which makes a huge difference in terms of creating a platform for people to connect versus a day event, which is most of TEDx events. Uh, Because when you come during the day, go listen to the talks and leave, then you really don't have time to connect with people. That's a good point. That's a good point. I travel at at conventions that are usually two to three to four days, and the audiences coming back can can reconnect with the people they met or heard speak. We speak on panels about all kinds of topics, and it's hard to soak it all in in one day. (laughs) So TEDx events, those 10,000 are they have different natures. They live broadcast only from TED. You can have a TEDx event with, with less than 100 people, half a day, two hours, one day. And the largest one usually are two-day event because they have enough experience for TED to say you're allowed to go and do a two-day event. And um, more possibilities to create the, those connections. Sure, sure. Well, you do events all year, all year round, I believe, and you have one coming up in September. We do events. Uh, we have at least, a, we have a, uh, an annual conference 
The last three years, uh, we had them at Segestrom Center for the Arts. This is for the first uh, time we are moving to Soka University. Uh, the date of the upcoming, the fourth annual conference, is September 19th and 20th. Um, it is, um, last year we had 2,045 guests okay. attending over two days. And we are expecting at least the same people attending today. And this is just the guests attending. Then we'll have it live broadcasted. In between the annual conferences, we have smaller events, which we call Salon, with one or two speakers limited to 100 guests, where there is really more interaction and conversation on more specific topics. Okay. How, how does someone go to this annual conference? Do you sell out of tickets? Can they buy them online? We sell tickets to our website, TEDxOrangeCoast.com or TEDxOC.com. Uh, we have 50% discount for students. We have different packages. Again, the prices are dictated by TED. There is a limit. So um, a student can come for a day pass, for a daily pass, uh, attend where the, the price of the ticket is about $50. And the maximum is 250 for a VIP pass. Okay. Uh, going through the entire experience and the VIP reception with the speakers and sponsors. Who, you know, could you tell us a little bit about who should go to the conference? We have a lot of listeners who are running their own firms and businesses, and would they get a lot out of going to TEDx? I guess um, the simple answer to this question is everyone. With that being said, uh, time poverty is one of our biggest issues these days. So I would say everyone who is interested at any age not younger than 10, 12. It's going to sure. be a little <laughs> bit hard. Although we had a nine years old who was so inspired that promised her mom, I'm going to be on that stage one day. Really? Uh, we have speakers at all ages. We had Jack Andraka, uh, 14 years old, two years ago. He invented a sensor detecting pancreatic cancer, 99% accurate, uh, out of his middle school. So these are inspiring for everyone. I would say everyone who think it is important enough to take a little bit of a short amount of time off of your daily routine mm -hmm. to go and meet with people who wants to have interesting conversation, who wants to make a change, who wants to do something for their communities, that's really the place to come, communicate, and get inspired. Can you tell us some of your top speakers that are, will be at the annual conference this year? We just announced the first six on our website and through a press release that went out last week. Uh, Umi Garrett, a pianist, is one of them. And uh, we have speakers and performers, but performers will talk and perform. It's not just about performance. We have... Um, Dan Miller, we have uh, Carlton Wilborn, they are on our website and through the press release. And within the next couple of weeks, we'll announce about 20 more. We'll have between 25 to 30 speakers. Is it usually themed or is it a very varied group of speakers? It's very varied, but we always have a, th I've have a theme for the event. Uh, we had we started with innovation without borders then we had redefining relevance last year we had beautiful minds and this year the theme of the event is tipping point tipping point the Interesting. themes are generic enough so you can really bring uh forward thinkers from different places different industries to talk about their own tipping point what is happening in their life, what is happening with their industries. So uh, themes, yes, but generic enough so you can plug in different stories. Does the tipping point also go into the tipping point of change in your life, life or your business? It goes to tipping point on a personal life, in your business, in your community, in your country, you name it, tipping point, and leave it up to you to define it. Awesome. I love that. A little mystery, a little, a little intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How, how can someone follow you and get in touch with you and, and, and learn more about TEDx Orange Coast? Uh, the best way is to go to our website and register to receive our newsletters. Uh, we are announcing the event. We are having interviews before and after the event with the uh, speakers that we are publicizing them. 
We are uh, present through all the social um, media channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, at TEDxOC.com. Um, TEDx Orange Coast, again, you look for a local event. We, I believe we are the biggest one in Southern California. And by the way, only 75% of our attendees are from California. Wow. 50% from OC. We have 24% uh, attending from out of California, 16% from the U.S., and 8% from the rest of the world. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What's in store for the future after this annual conference? Will there be another one next year? Uh, we are hoping and planning, and to be honest, it is just so much work that before each event we are know. saying... <laughs> This is the last one, but it is not the last one. No, the team is so motivated, and I am the luckiest person to have a dedicated, selfless team to work, to take wow. time out of their life, and to work to make this happen. Awesome. Well, all of you listening, if you want to get involved, uh, like Moj just said, you can go to their website, which was TEDxOrangeCoast.com. TEDxOrangeCoast.com or TEDxOC.com or social media at TEDxOrangeCoast, LinkedIn, Facebook. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. You're it was welcome. such a pleasure thank having, you, having you. me. I really appreciate you becoming a part of the critical mass community. So welcome. And again, everyone, this uh, I got to speak with Mojda Eskandari from TEDx. And just thank you again for being here. It was such a pleasure. I would love to have all of, all of you attending the event. Absolutely. You can attend as my guest. Well, we Your baby <laughs> shouldn't be there by then. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm excited to go. Uh, remember, everyone, the goal for this show is to help you, our listening audience of CEOs running middle market firms, to improve your decision-making skills. And I just want to thank everybody for listening to today's broadcast. Of course, this show is brought to you by our wonderful sponsors at Decision Toolbox, Smart Business Magazine, SNH Rubber, Succession Strategies, Center Club, Tone Software, UPS Protection, and MBN Design. I also want to thank, on a personal note, Rick Franzi and Critical Mass for inviting me to guest host. And I want to thank our engineer, fabulous Paul Roberts, our producer, Crystal Nunley, our guest coordinator, Kathleen Shepard, our live events manager, Asia Celestino, our social media manager, Melissa Padani, and our VP of Sales, Rose Chimera and our new assistant Amanda who I just met earlier today. I'm your host Janice Davis. You can find me on Twitter at Janice Davis. That's G G, uh, G instead of D. A lot of people think it's Denise <laughs> but it's a G a G uh, G E N E S E D A V I S or Facebook at a slash author Janice Davis. And if you want to like if you'd like to learn more about Critical Mass you can refer a future guest. You can advertise with us. Just visit our website at criticalmassforbusiness.com and until the next show I I hope all your decisions move your company in a positive direction.